If you eat palm the yam alone, you won't survive. But you must be living in heaven to survive here. You understand why I said that in a minute. Can we just bow our heads and just bless the Lord for, for this evening? Let's give him glory. Channels of my spirit open up. I am with the Father open up. No more trees, no limit. Open up. Let deep come to deep. Open up. Channels of my spirit. Open up. Hallelujah, Mahanta. I am with the Father. Tell the Lord, open the heavens now. Let I release you to find your place. In the name of Jesus. Can you say, I receive my release. Listen tonight. I was praying. When I was coming here, the Lord said, the Lord kept on talking about Sango Ota. Sango Ota. Sango Ota. And I said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? Because it was like I was being distracted from the meeting tonight. And I sat down there, here, and I began to see an open field. Hunters hunting everywhere. Arrows flying everywhere. The Lord said, you want to know Sango Ota? That's Sango Ota. The land of hunters. Where hunters hunt, where arrows fly, every day somebody is ensnaring somebody and the other one is ensnaring the other. Somebody is shutting down somebody. It's the land of hunters. Arrows fly here day and night. People are caught, people are trapped. It's a city that is at war with itself. I said, Lord, what did you say? He said, it's a place that is at war with his son. And I asked him, why, then why did you bring me here? Can we rise up? Can we begin to prophesy and command every hunter fall? Every hunter be broken. Every hunter be cut up. Every hunter in the name of Jesus, we release the fire of the Lord to consume you. We command the arrows to cease to fly. Every strange fire that is burning in Sango Ota, we come against that fire. We command that fire to die. I saw strange fires, strange voices. Strange thongs. Let the fires that are aroused in a hon in order, let them die. Every fire that is waking up, every 
every strange fire let it die let the strange fires die strange sacrifices die strange incest be wiped out come on somebody release your spirit after them release the word of god after them every strange fire burning in all of sangota tonight let them be quenched every strange fire burning be quenched every strange thirst thirst for blood thirst for war be quenched be quenched all strange ancestral spirits i saw a handover spirit where ancestors hand over to the next generation and the generation boast about their powers and they compete between families to manifest strange powers and strength i see a competition in the land a competition that manifests strange fires command the fires to die command the fires to be quenched my father arise quench the fires quench the fires my god arise and let your enemies be scattered set your altar in the midst of elam tonight and scatter all the strange tongues including the tongues that look like righteousness and are not righteousness scatter them every pretentious spirit scatter Jesus I want you to listen to me I had the Lord say I had the Lord say that this this altar place it is a place where strange tongues rule strange because their mouth is full of poison they live by poisoning everything that is alive they compete to poison things that are alive. So, so many things in the land are pretentious. They are coverings for the real thing. So, there is a pretentious spirit. What you see manifest in the outer is not what is in the inner. And I heard the Lord say, command the land to begin to vomit them out. And let judgment follow them as they are vomited out. So, open your mouth. Command the land, vomit them out. Let judgment follow them. Let judgment follow them. Vomit them out. Jesus Christ. Leviticus.
Leviticus 18, 24 and 25. The Bible says, Defile not ye yourselves in any of these things. For in all these, the nations are defiled, which I cast out before you. And the land is defiled. And the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity thereof upon it, and the land itself vomited out her inhabitants. Can, you, can we ask the Lord? Begin to vomit the, iniqu and iniqu uh, the inhabitants that do iniquity, that defile themselves with idols, and let your spirit smite. I saw a mystery in the heavens. I saw the mystery of Ezekiel 9. I saw God pick some specific angels. And I saw him set them upon the land with their sword. And was waiting for the land to start handing over those it wants to hand over for judgment. Can you tell the Lord, whoever is due for judgment, let the land not hide. Let it hand over. Oh yeah, open your mouth. Because this meeting, specific things will begin to happen after one that is due for judgment to set the land free in order to set the land free let the lord hand over command the land prophesy to the land you will still hear that prophesy to the land not to hold back let it let it hand over the land itself knows those that are due for judgment anyone that is being covered by darkness or covered by righteousness but their ways are dark let the land hand over let the Lord, land remove the veil let the Lord remove the veil let the land hand over let the swordsmen of Israel cut off let the swordsmen of Israel cut off in the name of Jesus can you lift up your right hand and shout a big amen? amen? Somebody lift up your right hand and shout a second big amen. amen. Somebody lift up your right hand and shout a last big amen to your prayers. Amen. Can you wave to the Lord and shout hallelujah? hallelujah? I want to sit down on your feet, uh, on, your, uh, on your seat. Listen, with this I draw a marker in the heavenly places. Anyone that falls into this category, the land will not compromise with them anymore. Amen. The land will hand them over. Amen. Anyone that has become a torment to your church, let that judgment be transferred to Amen. that one. Anyone that has become a torment to your anointing, let the judgment of this agreement tonight be transferred to that one. Amen. Let the land hand over. Somebody say, hand over. Amen. Let the land go to war against them. Let that Ezekiel 9, let it be fulfilled. Amen. Be careful. Even within the church, the land will hand over people for judgment. Amen. Because I see a few elders have, uh, affected. The land would hand over for judgment. So you have to be careful. And that's why in this meeting, you must make your part right. There is, it's not a revival. There is a visitation by fire. A rebirth. It's more than a revival. There is a rebirth coming upon the land and the old soil is being removed and a new soil is being put upon the land. This land will be called Beulah. This land will become beautiful. I didn't hear somebody say amen. I saw the mountains give up. I saw the valleys give up. And the description of the land has to do with mountains, valleys, hidden places in the rocks. Open to one of the scriptures I used to use for prayer. Then I pray the Lord allows me to go into the main thing. Listen. We want to do justice tonight. One of my favorite scriptures when I wrote the book Practical Prophetic Prayer was Jeremiah 16, 16. Open to it. 
Jeremiah 16 to 6, I mean 16, 16. What does it say? Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. Something with this land is connected to the river and fishes. They shall fish them. Because there are too many fishers fishing out people here. He said, God said he will send his own fishers with their, his own nets. They will trap them in their imaginations, in their machinations. Today, anything that is stealing in your house and from your house, let it be trapped in Jesus' name. It will not pass this season in Jesus' name. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say, my God, arise. My God, arise. Flush them out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. And he said, after will I send for many hunters. And they shall hunt them from where? Amen. Every mountain. Look, part of the covenant of this land is hidden in mountains and rocks. Mountains. The stone carries a lot of secrets here. The stone carries a lot of secrets here. Rocks. It says, from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks where the secrets of the land have been hidden. Ah! Where is your destiny hidden? Let that place give it up now. That is why the land has to vomit something yes, so that it can be judged tonight you will spend time telling the lord the land must vomit something that is connected to me so that it can be judged the land must give up something you know in the last days when jesus will come back in the last days at the trumpet blast the sea will give up yes. what it is holding oh, yes. have you read that in the bible yes, the dead will the sea will vomit them out so that they can meet with the Lord in the air. It will give up its dead. The land will give up its dead. The north, the south, the east will give up what they are holding. Today, whatever is holding part of your destiny, according to this season of the Lord in his calendar, for Sango Ota, somebody shall give up in the name of Jesus. So, there is a mystery of giving up, and there is a mystery of judgment taking place. In the, I'm interpreting this season. That we have entered after the seventh month. There is a mystery of giving up. Wicked people will begin to make mistakes. And they will be cut off by their wickedness. Because you have prayed today. Their spell in the land is broken. But tonight. You must begin to place these demands. Of these first few minutes. Unto the Lord. It's very very important. Because holes of rocks. Are playing very important role. The sea here is playing a very important role. Masses of water listing. And much more, the reed in the sea. I will come to that. The reed of Egypt. The reed in the sea. Where Bophemot hides himself. The spirit of Bophemot hides himself. God described this place, the land of deep mysteries. So when God began to eat up our brother's insides. Causing him to feel pains. And his spirit began to hover over a, ge a geographical area. From Abelkuta to, uh, to Sangota and all the other places. God was saying indirectly, it is time. Yeah. When God began to gather all of you together like this. In this meeting, God is saying it is what? Yeah. Somebody say it is, time. it is time. Tonight I'm not preaching for preaching sake. I'm not preaching because I am a speaker. I am speaking because I am a prophet sent forth from today. Otherwise I would have said no. I had options. I'm actually on my way to Port Harcourt. Listen, anything that is blocking your way, let judgment begin this night. Somebody said this night, let judgment begin. Whether the thing is hiding in your house or in plain sight, 
you eat and drink and live with the thing every day and you don't know that the thing is your torment ah let the veil be broken now somebody shout give up, give up! so we're in a season just watch it i give you this next three months watch it when the land begins to give up for judgment pretentious spirit i keep calling pretentious spirits are going to be dealt with because they are the most dangerous ones there are those who live in you know them they are demons but they are the ones you don't know they are the more dangerous ones so even when you shut down the one you think you know you still see there is a leakage and you think your prayer is not answered it's because you were talking to the wrong people somebody say give up let darkness give up what it is holding for judgment in the name of Jesus. Can you bow your head and pray for your ministry and your business? And pray for the land. And tell the land, give up what darkness is holding for judgment that they may be judged. Give up that they may be judged. Give up! And let the judgment begin tonight. I draw a bloodline over my life. I draw a bloodline over the ministry, over the business. Give up what darkness is holding. I demand that for my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Because of our time, so that we can move properly and quickly. Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I will read 13 to 15. And later I'll go back maybe to read from verses 1 to 7 so that you can understand. This is what the Lord say. The Lord God says. Because people are saying to you, you devour men. And deprive your nation of children. Now, this was the kind of revelation God was giving me about the land. I'm reading from HCSB. The Holman version. I don't know which version is on the screen. But it's the Holman Christian yeah, Standard Bible. This is what the Lord God says. Because people are saying to you. You devour men. And deprive your nation of children. This is talking to the land. The land divorce men. Eh? And does what? Deprive the nation of very powerful, intelligent, tangible rulers. Children. Children of destiny. You come here, you were, you were growing somewhere else. Your spirit was free, you were happy. You enter here and something clamps down on your spirit. As if a clamper is waiting for you. And then you start struggling. When you go out of this place, you minister freely. Things happen. You come back home, it's shut down. Growth is slow, but growth is faster outside. Today, that pattern and cycle is broken. It says, because people are saying to you, you devour. In fact, in enchantment, those who are enchanters say it, they tell the land like that plainly. You devour. It's that you devour. So, because of that, they empower the land to devour more. Or your land. Collect your own. Land, swallow that one. Land, stop that one. Land, stop that governor. Land, stop that president. Land, open this gate. Part of the deepest institution that controls Nigeria's, Nigeria at the center comes from this geographical area. I'm telling you from the spirit, the kind of witchcraft, the depth, the secrets, that control nations and places is in this area. When 
the Lord began to speak to me early hours of this morning, from about 12 midnight last night concerning this place, fear caught me. Up to 3 o'clock, I sat on the floor and God was just talking. I was praying for grace tonight because I've hardly slept. When he does not allow you to sleep, how can you sleep? Sleep was taken out of my eyes and he kept introducing some things I didn't plan. He said, you have come to a land. The last time you came, I didn't introduce you to the land. Now may I introduce you to where you are going to? I said, Lord, why? He said, because the appointed time has come. And the seasons are upon the land. The land needs to release her children of destiny. It must not deprive the nation of her children. That means this land carries a mystery. No wonder Abbasan John lives around here. This land carries a mystery. Or Abbasan John lives around the geographical area of your vision. This land carries a mystery. There are yet sons that will turn around this nation from this place. Amen. And the land must not hold them back. Yes. I said the, Lord, the land will not hold your destiny back. Yes. I release the hand of God to release you to fullness. Yes. It's what people say. People are saying. To you, you devour men and deprive your nation. Your nation of children. Verse 14 says, Therefore, you will no longer do what? Devour men and deprive your nation of children. That means there is a set time. We'll be talking about that tomorrow more. We'll go deeper tomorrow. But there is a set time. Therefore, you will no longer devour men and deprive your nation of children. This is the declaration of the Lord. No more. Somebody say, no more. No more. And then verse 15. Can we all read verse 15 on the screen? It says, I will no longer allow the insults of the nations to be heard against you. You see, God is going to deprive the land from insulting the nation. But God will also not allow the insult of the nations that used to abuse the land and curse the land and speak things about the land. There are many sons and daughters who will not come home because the land will swallow them. No, God will not allow that insult again. I said God will not allow the insult in your life. I had the Lord say, he will not allow the insult. I will no longer allow the insults of the nations to be heard against you. And you will not have to endure the reproach of peoples anymore. Now, when the Lord uses peoples as plural, it means there are all kinds of peoples involved in the idolatry. The pot is not only indigenous. It's just that they found a place that was conducive. It's a conducive altar. So everybody comes to make a strange offerings here. If you understand spiritual language. The ground is conducive. So they go there to make strange offerings. And take things from this ground to rule in other lands. I'm saying what the spirit commanded me. Forgive me if I'm not speaking your language today. Because I'm coming to the place of the spirit and the word. From this angle. Listen, because this is very important. I will no longer allow the insults of the nations to be hard against you. And you will not have to endure the reproach of the peoples anymore. You will no longer cause your nation to stumble. Nigeria will stumble again. Amen. God said, in this place we shall shout, enough is enough. Amen. I didn't hear somebody shout, enough is enough. enough. Let the cycles of Nigeria cease now. And let the glory of the Lord rest upon Nigeria. Those cycles of abnormally, of crisis, of confusion, in what I hear, dust my feet, and I command that it stops now. That the freedom of the nation shall come from water. From Sango 
altar about Kuta, these areas. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. So there is a tumbling that will take place here that will precipitate the tumbling of the higher. When that time comes, you will understand what I said. There is a tumbling coming. Then the altars will begin to fall everywhere. Then they will know that the day of the Lord has come. It says you will no longer cause your nation to stumble. This is the declaration of the Lord. He said the reproach of the peoples will not be heard anymore here. This is the word of the Lord. So what am I seeing the Lord do? I'm seeing the Lord going all over this area and all over the nations particularly in Nigeria, and loosening men that had been tied. Amen. Everyone that has been shut down, particularly ministers or anybody that has carried the oil. Anybody has, that has a altar, any a altar of anointing, but is struggling with his environment. You say God is with you, you speak the word, but you are struggling with the environment. You are struggling with your business. Your neighbors who don't serve God seem to be prospering. Why is your own not working? Why? I will show you two quick things. And we will quickly pray. And close for tonight. Because tonight's is introduction. And tomorrow we will continue. I want you to stand up on your feet for a moment. I command every strange rope and every strange identity that has become your signet to the world. They are not seeing the real you because you are shut down. I command that strange garment to fall away. I command the glory that you had with the Lord from the beginning. The one that were proposed for you before you were put in your mother's womb. The one in the day God gave birth to you. <clears throat> intended to use to write your name on earth as a praise and a glory. I command that original garment to fall back into your body. Amen. I therefore tear down every wall yes, that has been building these strange garments around you. Yes, and every voice, every spirit, every man receive your fresh ordination tonight. Amen. Let the fire of revival begin now. Amen. Somebody say let the fire fall now. In the name of Jesus. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. Now I'm going to quickly show you something. So that we can close. Please sit down quickly. Open to Zechariah chapter 3. This is what God is doing. He's going about picking people that are appointed and tearing the veil. Tearing the veil. Just tearing the veil. They carry substances that the enemy will not allow. If I they think they have done plenty, they don't know they have not done anything. Some of you, your lives are just starting. Amen. What does it says? And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And st Satan standing at his heart, right hand to resist him. High priest, Satan, they don't flow together. The anointing of the high priest should drive away Satan. He can't stand before the face of the anointing. But here he was, actually standing. And the Bible says in the next verse 3, and the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord himself said unto Satan, concerning that priest, the Lord rebuked this, O oh, Satan, even the Lord that had chosen Jerusalem, rebuked thee. Is not this a brand plugged out of the fire? Do you know the implication of that? Ah! It means Joshua had suffered for the anointing. Joshua has
have sacrificed a lot of things for the anointing like some of you have done. Suffered a lot of persecution for the anointing. Denied himself of many things for the anointing. He has gone through the fire for the anointing. Is this man not the one pulled out of struggle? Plugged out of the fire. He has survived consistently. He has kept his faith even in his unbelief sometimes. Even in the contradiction of his soul. Are you going through that kind of labyrinth, that kind of chain, that kind of witchcraft? I command that the light of Jesus break it now. Amen. That a fire, like the light that met Paul on the road to Damascus, will speak to your life tonight. Amen. Now, I want you to look at something. The Lord rebuked the old Satan. Even the Lord that had chosen what? That means for the sake of Jerusalem, the land, I'm going to remove your rags so that you can serve the land effectively. I'm not removing the land because you served me. I'm not removing the land because you are righteous. I'm not removing your rag, sorry, because you are righteous. I'm removing your rag so that you can effectively cultivate the land, serve the land, so that by your own healing and deliverance, the land will be healed and delivered. That means you must make a vow that when I remove these rags, the land will prosper Amen. by your hands. Amen. By your mouth. You will do deliberate things. To also remove the rags of the land. Because as you are. So is the land. Because you are in rags. The land is also in rags. If your rags are removed. The land's rags. You know some of you are not. Really really going anywhere. In your spirit and ministry. Because all the blessings. Even the prosperity that you have received. You have consumed it on yourself. You have not served the purpose for that anointing, which is the land. Kure, what are you talking about? Let's go back now to the heart of the matter. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the word. Can you put John chapter 1 there? In the beginning was the word. And the word was with good. God. Put it back in the still whole, whole man version. Hey, CSB. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was what? This same word that you have received of the spirit. Was actually an original human being. I mean. Was a human being at one point. In the earth. In the beginning was the word. The word. It's still the same word. The word. Christ is the word. Everything about the Bible is prophecy. And prophecy is around Christ. Everything beginning to end is around Christ. I am the beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega. Everything is the word. It's Christ you gave your life to. Christ in me, the hope of glory. You boast about it. I can do all things through Christ. Christ, who strengthens me, who gives me life. I am invisible because you can't touch Christ. Now, let me show you the secret of this word you are talking about, spirit and the word. Let me show you the secret. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was who? Yes, he was in the beginning. He was with God in the beginning. It's because I had crammed the King James Version. <laughs> okay. He was with God in the beginning. No, don't go back to King James. Leave it at home, man. He was with God in the beginning. Go ahead, up to verse 4. All things were created through him. And apart from him was what? That has been created. That means the valleys, the mountains, all of them were created through who? 
through the word. Not through God. Through the word, by the word. Everything was created through him. I will give you the, 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 the other second scripture in the book of Colossians chapter 1 that agrees with this. All things were created through him. And apart from him was not one thing. And apart from him, not one thing was created that has been created, has been created. What does he say in verse 4? Life. Anything that is life was in him. And that life was the light of man. That means everything he created has an essence of his life. That means everything he's created has a touch of his being. Including the mountains, the hills. He created them by his word. Everything, the waters, the sea. Let there be. There was. Let there be. He was either, they were either created directly or they were a repercussion of his word. Whichever way you see it. But the essence of his word is in all of them. And that is why all of them will respond to the word. Even when they don't respond to you. The place of the word. Now, let's see where this word was placed. <laughs> this is the one that excites me the most in these teachings that we are talking about these two days. Let's see it. Verse 14. See the whole man Bible. Verse 14. Everybody read that. The word became flesh and did what? Now, you see a full stop there. And did what? Residence amongst us. That means the world became fresh and rented the house next to your apartment. Your neighbor is the world. For him to be effective, he had to dwell amongst us. He has to be the next neighbor. And where he is, everything responds to him. Why is everything not responding to you? Because you are in rags like Joshua. Because you have been selfish. You have not served the land with your blessing. My God, that is PFN Vice Secretary. How much has the PFN congregations... And the people of Lagos been served by your presence in the PFN. By your glory in the PFN. Those of you who are in Otasongo here with your ministries. How much has your ministry affected and infected the land? How much has the blessings given to you gone back to the land? How much is your church investing in the land? In the lives of the people. In their daily struggles. What are you doing? The one anointing cannot take away. Your sacrifice can take away. What physical sacrifice attributes are you putting as living altars on the land? To draw attention to the anointing that you carry. We are talking practical things today. Did you hear what I just said? The Bible says, even if you don't believe me, believe me for my work's sakes. For my works, they are there that speak of what? My works speak of me. Is your works spiritual? Eh? Hello? Is your work spiritual? No. Your work is in the physical, your work is not in the spiritual. The only work you do in the spiritual is prayer. Commanding, speaking. That is the spirit part of you exercising priesthood. But the real work is washing the feet of men. Is drawing men to Christ. Is building institutions of blessing. Becoming a covering. An instrument of the translation of his love and power. The one you don't have resources to do. Your physical abilities will cover for you. Somebody is sick. Go to his house. Carry him to the hospital yourself. You don't have money. 
but you still have an ability. He said that pastor next door came and carried me to the hospital before anybody came. If he were not there, I would be dead. That walk is speaking. You have your walks. Many of us are not doing our walks. The spirit is just superficial in our mouth. It's a confession of faith. Spirit is not physical. I mean, it's not spirit. It, 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 it's, it's not a confession. The manifestation of the spirit is physical. So, is it physical that confirms that you have a spirit? Without the physical, your spirit does not exist. The word became physical, became flesh, and took a dwelling amongst men. Decided to be the next dear neighbor. Why? Because everything else was created by the word. Why? Because the word, since the word created everything else, everything else can only respond to the now you are talking. I repeat, since everything was created by the word, and without him was nothing, eh? Shangota is waiting for the right word and the right works, and it will respond. Something will snap. The right word, the right works, something will snap. And that prophet that will do the right works and the right word is coming. Somebody will just light a candle and everywhere will start burning. Did you hear what I just said? The spirit and the word. He's just waiting for the right, 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 right. People who live their lives. That means as long as your anointing is not building the land, you will remain naked. Your anointing will remain corrupted. Did you hear what I said? Your anointing will not bring you to fulfillment. That was what Joshua was facing. He had great anointing. He has suffered for the faith. The, the, like Paul will say, the mark of the Lord was on his forehead. Was in his body. Yet Satan still stood, had the temerity to stand to accuse him. He's not running away from him. Satan came to take his own because everything he did glorified Satan more than it glorified God. It did. And how do we know physically it did not affect Jerusalem? And because God knew that the hidden treasures, the key to Jerusalem was still in Joshua. God had to come and stand between him and that key. And say, my friend, get out. The seasons of this man are appointed. Did you hear what I said? Oh yeah, I take away the old face of struggle. The face of life. I'm taking it away. Satan, get out. Just like he was talking about Peniel today. That was Joshua's Peniel. I'm taking away the old face. And I'm ushering into a new face with new garments. With a new orientation. And this time his ministry will be Jerusalem. Where you clothe the land, you will be clothed. If you don't clothe the land, Isaiah 62. Quickly, Isaiah. Chapter 62. Ah, Baba. Pako rebo sente. Remahandi yahalaba. Monde recante yakanta. There is somebody here. The mot that has eaten up everything. Everything that is fertile in your life. Let that mot be cut off now. Amen. 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 The rust that has eaten up all the living elements. Today, let the Holy Ghost enter into your life. Amen. And swallow up that rust. Amen. That was the problem of this young man called Joshua. He thought he had, he had achieved a lot. He was a high priest already. 
He was not a small man. Oh, I was a national PFN general secretary. I was not a state secretary. I was a national secretary. I, I pride myself in telling people I was that the boy's choice. He chose me in the day of election. He doesn't like me saying that. I was one of the few that nobody voted on. Just by that one choice, the spirit had spoken. Did you hear what I just said? And by God's grace, I did not disappoint God. You are chosen for the land. You are chosen to fight for the salvation of the land. To fight for the glorification of the land. To take away the nakedness of the land. Are you doing that? Or you are taking advantage of your choice to divide booties. To divide remnants. To look for where you will grow yourself more. Oh, I thank God for the testimonies of my president concerning me, President Omobude, when we were in power together in the PFL. Every government house we went to, I did not forget my priesthood. I carried it with me to the government house. Whatever the Lord told me, I would look at the governor, taking advantage of that position. But adventure, that was why God put me there. I would say, Kabi Esi, the Lord says you have done it. That the Lord said, each time I open my mouth to talk, his heart will start beating. <laughs> we are here on a court seat call. This man, don't say the wrong thing. So. <laughs> eh? Don't this ah, don't cause trouble for us. But the Lord who chose you has already put the word. Yeah. He will guide the tongue. Yeah. That the tongue will not wound, it will heal. I didn't hear so even when the thing is negative it will heal Amen. and it will be accepted Amen. and those of you who don't know we visited the then Lagos governor and body I speak freely to let you know if the land does not benefit from you we had finished everything he had promised us roads we promised we asked him to build the PFN headquarters road let him tie it. It was started in his time. This government finished it. With fiat. But it started in Ambody's time. And I was there that day with the president. With the then leader of the Lagos State. The chairman. And we had finished. Every, it was a beautiful. Everybody was happy. We prayed in the spirit. Prayed together. Then the president made a mistake. He said, Apostle Kure, the secretary of the PFM will close the meeting for us. <laughs> that was the mistake. And he didn't know why we were praying. Visions of the man was coming up. I said, ah! I said, can we stop? Open your eyes. Everyone, they say, oh God, Kure don't come again. I am happy. That this work still follow me. The oil makes God defend me. Live after PFN. I still have a live after PFN. Mm. I don't need to be an ESCO. To keep the witness. I speak to governments across the globe. Red carpets. I don't need the name general secretary. To have a red carpet rolled out for me. Did you hear what I just said? The works speak for you. And God creates the situations. You don't struggle for compete with somebody to say something. I don't say anything anywhere. But I'm always brought out from the shadows. I'm forced to do something. My friend, why can't you allow the Lord set in the altar? Don't set it yourself. Just live in obedience. Leave the rest to him. Am I talking to you tonight? Listen. I said, sir, you have a wonderful spirit. Good spirit. It is God's will to give you the kingdom. But the kingdom is about to be taken away from you. I said, in nine months, the trouble that you move you out will begin. 
And we were there, either in the first quarter or early the second quarter, between March and April, in that government house. I can't remember the dates now. But it means that same year. And I told him, I said, sir, you know the trouble. I described the trouble. I won't describe the trouble now. Where the trouble was coming from. I told him exactly where the troubles will come from. And I told him, go and make peace. The trouble you take lightly is going to wound you. I didn't know the signs were there already with him. But he just thought it will pass. It's nothing serious. Those rags can finish you if God does not defend you. I said, sir, you are a good man. And you deserve your upliftment. Not because you don't have flaws. Like Joshua the priest. Not because you are perfect. But when you got into power. You started setting up foundations. And bringing a vision. I always tell people. Lagos State has always been lucky. With governors. Jaconde, all of them visionaries. The man who was minister for works and became minister for power. Visionaries. Lagos has always been blessed. And today they have produced a president. Whether it is for one day or for four years, it doesn't matter. Lagos has registered a president. I didn't hear somebody say amen. You cannot remove it. Whether by enchantment or by righteousness, Lagos has produced. You can't take it away. So don't curse what God's finger has allowed to manifest. He that has an ear. What the Spirit said to the church. Now listen, because our time is almost up. And he went and shared it. Some people were angry with me. Not in our school. Because in our school, people weren't talking to me anyhow. Because they know who I was. Eh? Because the one who speaks will always defend himself. So I don't struggle with anybody. You want to talk? I say, well, I leave you with him. If you corner you for corner, now your fault. So what you don't understand, Banuemo, shut up your mouth. Everybody kept quiet. I didn't know the president put it to heart. What had happened that day? He had seen it happen in the north when he came touring, came touring the governors of the north, the Muslim governors. Confronted, we came out of a government house and God said, don't follow that road. Follow the other road. I was the chief host because I'm an ordiner. <laughs> the president is not an ordiner. He was under my care. When I had the spirit, say, follow that road. Thank God my own escort vehicle was the one in front because it was one I knew where we were going to. The police that were keeping us, they didn't know where we were going to and we kept it away from them. So I called my people. I said, when you get the other one, turn right, don't turn left. And the president observed it. He was in the car with me. We got to that junction. We turned another way. And even the people who were on the queue from Mina, Ninja State, said, that is the wrong road. I told my people, I am the commander here. Move on and go and do a detour somewhere else. And let's go back to the hotel. I sensed there was danger in the other road. And it was confirmed later by the DSS. Did you hear what I just said? I used the gifts to serve. I didn't keep the gifts at home. When I went to the office, I carried the gifts to me to the PFN office. I carried the gifts to church. I carried the gifts to the market. It speaks everywhere I enter. Today, 
everything that has blindfolded your gift, let the fire of the Lord burn it out of your life. In the name of Jesus, receive back your sight. Receive back your sight. Receive back your sight. The president will never forget our fellowship together. Money? Go and ask them. You give me a million, a hundred million? Eh? On an official tour, I will take it back to the president. Hundred, complete. I don't want transport money. I don't want God to ask me. The one way God, they bless me personally. He passed that one. So why should I take PFN small stipends? Because I'm taking advantage of my office. I give it back so that you can serve the people. That's why we left plenty in the post when we left. Hundreds of millions. When we left, he's nodding his head because he should know. Did you hear what I said? Because it was not our pattern to divide the money within ourselves. Of course, there are people who didn't like it. They will oppose you. But you have eternity to explain yourself. So be careful. Rather, I was, up, by God's grace, opening doors. Not PFN opening doors for me. PFN never opened door for me throughout my stay as PFN. Eh? I was using my connections to lead PFN in. The president, the then president was my, even the vice president who became the president now will testify of that. We tried to enter Lagos State. That time, Satan blocked us. I used my own connections to open that door to Lagos State. I know the names of those who opened it. The permanent secretaries who opened it, who were talking from inside and answering us because we were frustrated into meeting with Ambody. But people who would tell our story. But that is why I'm still standing. That is why I'm still prospering. That is why there is still work for me. Look, when you dress the land, the land will dress you. Did you hear what I just said? Isaiah 62, put verse 4. You will no longer be called what? Deserted. Are you a minister feeling deserted? No. He says, you will no longer could be called, and your land. So it's not referring to the land. It's referring to the people, the ministers. You will no longer be called deserted. And your land will not be called desolate. Oh yeah, everybody say, instead. Yes. You will be called, my delight is in her. Can somebody say amen to that? Yes. And your land, married. That means you are the key that makes the land married. Go look. He said, "For the Lord, Lord delights in you, and your land will be married." Go to verse five. For as a young man marries a young woman, so your sons will marry you. As a groom rejoices over his bride, so your God will rejoice over you. That means you are supposed to be the one married to the land. Eh? Your church is supposed to be married to the land. The land should become fertile because you are there. Mm. Mm. So the land intercedes for you every day. The land releases her beauty to cover you. Oh, I don't have enough time. I will start pouring scriptures at you. In Isaiah chapter 4, what does it say in verses uh, 3 and 4? Whoever remains in Zion, whoever is left in Jerusalem will be called holy. All in Jerusalem who are destined to leave. <clears throat> what does the next verse say? Verse 5. Quickly, quickly, sir. Then the Lord will create a cloud of smoke by day and a glowing from dead of fire by night over the entire site of Mount Zion and over its assemblies for there will be a canopy over all. The glory. Now, no, no, no. Go back to verse 2. We have seen this one. On that day, what does the Lord say? The branch of the Lord will be what? And what? Who is that branch? You. Now, look at it. And the fruit of where? 
within the pride and glory of Israel's survivors. That means the land will become comely. You will till a little and get plenty from the land because the land delights in you. The land loves you. The land will clothe you. The, Lord will, the land will command you. You are not desolate. Somebody said, I still live in Kafanchan. Consistent. Yes, I am in Kafanchan. But come to where we stay. It's a city. It competes with any of your cities here in Abuja. We have the highest building in all of northern Nigeria that God built for us as a sign of promise and glory. When I say the highest building, I'm not just talking about glory. 16-story building with the only walking lift in all of Kaduna State. That means it has lift that carries, actually carries people up. Including the government houses. Their lifts are not working. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? Yes, I think who was going through that lift. He said, what? You mean in this land? This is the only living walking lift I know. I'm talking about the former vice president. When he visited with me last year. He entered. And actually the lift was going up. He said, what? I've not put it on television trying to boast about it. I'm not making noise. Did you hear what I said? Because I only want to do what God wants me to do. I don't want a distraction. Whatever God does not want me to do, I don't want to do. Because self-glory will make you do what you don't want to do. It will compromise you. When you seek self-glory, you seek human... Uh, 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 recognition. The Lord, if you, if, if you look at the King James Version, the fruit of the Lamb will be the pride and glory of Israel's survivors. Put the King James Version. It says, and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely, when they say comely, friendly to the righteous that is left. So, all this situation in the country will not reflect in your life. Amen. I didn't hear somebody say amen. amen. All these situations in the land will not affect you. Look, the drought will become comely when it sees you friendly. There is drought everywhere. When you enter, it gives you dew, the dew of heaven. You find water where nobody has water. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. I won't tell you a lie. That is what I'm experiencing. I'm not one of those grumbling. I told them in one of the prophetic moments. I said, look, whether na Obi, uh, whether na Tiku, eh, whether na who be the third person self? <laughs> Forgive me, I'm in the state. Tunubu, I am reigning. I will reign with all of them. And people said, what do you mean? I said, my destiny is not it's not by, dictated by who rules. It's dictated by the righteousness of God in my life. He justifies me before all situations. And make the situations work for me. Why? Because I work for the land. So, if there is a take home tonight. Go and start dressing the land. You meet somebody who is dying. Save him. You meet somebody who is suffering because too many demons. Introduce Christ to you and tell him, look, my Christ will set you free. Don't let him die. Give the thirsty water to drink. Whether spiritual or physical water. Add the two together. Give him the physical, give him the spiritual. We have a hospital where Muslims and Christians come in. Muslims get born again. People evangelize them. There are prayer meetings every morning in that hospital. So if you are a Muslim, you don't want to pray, don't come to our hospital. And Sarudin became popular because of their works. They have schools everywhere. At the beginning, it was like it was only for Muslims. But there are Christians who have gone to Sarudin schools. Am I telling the truth here? Yes, Where are your own? Your own cities of defense for the land. The Christian schools have gone dead, moribund, because of mismanagement. 
The Muslim schools are still alive and working. What is wrong with you? Go back and rebuild all those broken walls that have fallen around you and start doing the works you should be doing. You see, you have, you have destroyed the priorities. The world took residence amongst them. The world lived amongst them to serve them because everything is connected to the world. The chair you sit is connected to the world. If you read my book, Practical Prophetic Prayer, everything responds to the world. Your car responds to the world. In those days, you stole anything from my place, you will die. Or you will be arrested. But it's the end of the road for you. Or the end of that ministry for you. If the ministry of stealing is the end of your ministry of stealing. So people were afraid. Muslims who come and confess because God was killing their children. When they took our things to Kefi. Up to Narasarawa state in those days. And they will bring them back with their own hand. Here is your generators that we stole. All the way from Nasarawa back to Kafanchan. Because everywhere they went, the generator refused to be sold. And they were dying on the road. They were having, they don't have that kind of bad luck before. It brought, it's like when they were carrying the altar for in those five Philistine states. Why can't God turn your altar into that? That is why we are still very alive and blossoming in the midst of opposition. We were planted into the midst of opposition and persecution. And God is still prospering us. Why are you not prospering in the midst of the hunters here? Why? Because your garments, because you have not served the land properly, not with a pure heart. When you do it is to show off. When you do it is to get the favor of the king. Of the land. When you do it is to do. You must add your own on top. Your benefit must be there. It's for a promotion. PFA never told me thank you. And I labored for them. And when they did election. They didn't even give me one small position. And you, the truth is coming out. <laughs> Can you stop that gummy and tell God to forgive you? Put the King James version of that Isaiah scripture. 62 that we just read. What does the King James Version say? You will, no, no, it's not you will no longer call, be called deserted. Put the King James Version. King James. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, not the word forsaken. Joshua got forsaken. He had all the anointing, everything in the right place. He was the high priest. But because the land was not covered, he was naked. If you make the land naked, you will be naked. That's all. Neither shall thy land be more, no more, any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hepzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Verse 5. For as a young man married a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiced over the bride, so shall thy Lord rejoice over thee. You bless the land, who rejoices over you? Not the land. But the land will become comely to you. So look, even if God does not bless you, the land will bless you. Can we close with that Ezekiel scripture? I am five minutes, four minutes into my time. Ezekiel chapter 36. But let's go back to verse 1. And you will rise up. Also thou son of man, prophesy where? Mountains of Israel. And say ye mountains of Israel, hear ye the word of the Lord. If the mountains cannot hear, will you say the mountains you hear? Jeremiah and Jeremiah 22 said, O earth, verse 29, O earth, earth, hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear you the word of the Lord. God told me, lastly, that you need to go out and begin to pray the prayer we prayed at the beginning. Did you hear what I just said? He said, prophesy to the mountains. Say, ye mountains of Israel. We need to start telling you all these mountains here. I'm going to conclude the rest tomorrow. 
He said, hear. Hear. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Can you go to the other? Thus say the Lord God. Because the enemy had said against you, aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. Put the King James Version, I mean, put the Holman Version. Just translate it back to Holman. This is what the Lord God says. Because the enemy has said about you, good, the ancient heights have become our possession. Ancient heights. All the spiritual high places. It's from there we are controlling you. If you were sowing the seed of righteousness to the land, the land will oppose them for your sake. But you are not sowing the seed. So they have the advantage. The ancient high places are in our possession. Therefore, go ahead. Prophesy and say, this is what the Lord God says. Because they have made you desolate and have trampled you from every side so that you became a possession for the rest of the nations and an object of people's gossip and slander. Let's rise up on our feet. So we can go home early enough and come back tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to pray all kinds of prayers. I'm happy that there are many ministers and they are doing their part. Talking from different dimensions of the spirit and the land. But I'm going to the heart of the body of this meeting. Whatever we do here, if it's not relevant to the land, your spirit and word is useless. The benefactor of the spirit and word is the land. Everything is geared towards what? If after you have gotten all the spirit and all the word, and your land is not changed, you don't have the spirit and you don't have the word. We'll get into that tomorrow. Deeper. And we'll command the reeds that are pulling you down to all cut off. We'll connect the messengers on both sides. Like you heard him say, one moment by a spirit, Peter did one thing. I wrote that down. Nobody has put it like that, like that, in all the meetings I've gone to. And the next moment, by another spirit, the same Peter, the same oracle, the same body, the same temple, was being used to utter evil. That Jesus had to say, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus equated him to Satan. When he's supposed to be an enemy of Satan, he's an instrument, an oracle of righteousness. The same father by the same mouth who said, you are blessed. You are the stone. Flesh and blood has not told you. He's the same one that told the same man again, Satan, get out. And he said, be careful. You can be used as an instrument for righteousness and at the same time be used as an instrument for unrighteousness in this moment. Because your spirit is not descending and you are careless. Unto whomsoever you submit yourself servant unto, unto him you are servant. That is what the Bible says. It doesn't matter how many years you have been in the gospel. Can you tell the Lord to begin to shred out every rag in your life? Shred them out. My father, the focus is me tonight. If I am free, the land is free. If I'm not free, the land can never be free. So if the land is not free, it's because the church is not free. If the land is still caught in the web of darkness and corruption in Nigeria, then there is the web of darkness and corruption in the church. The land is a reflection of the church. Stop blaming Atiku. Stop blaming uh, Obi. Stop blaming uh, Tunubu. Tunubu is not a problem. We are the problem. If the right oil spoke to the land, the land itself will fight for itself and will fight for you. I repeat, I will show you tomorrow, the land will fight for you. But the word must take residence. Can you tell the Lord? Let the word take residence. You are the neighbor to somebody. How much have you affected that person? All of Kafanchan, if there is trouble, everybody comes to take refuge in throne room. Everybody. They say, if only we will enter there, we cannot be touched. There is an oil there that does not allow people to touch us. Muslims and Christians, so they all gather together in that camp. That is the only place where they can see eye to eye and sit together until the trouble is over. No devourer enters that camp. That is the history of that camp. And we have been there as a ministry for about 33 years. 
33 years as a ministry in that camp. I've been ministering for 42 years. But the throne room itself is 33 years. Not one sword has gone through the camp. It's a city of refuge for Muslims, Christians, everybody, Hindu. What they say, once we can reach that camp, so everybody runs with their family to keep in the camp. It has become what the Bible calls the city of refuge for all, for the land, the place of rest. What are you to the land? Are you a place of rest? Or are you a rascal? You are like Jacob. Is that what your anointing has become? My father, in the name of Jesus tonight, kindle a fire. And let the fire begin to burn in our houses. And tear down the rocks. In every home, every spirit, every anointing. Let the fire fall. Somebody shout, let the fire fall. Can you shout that seven times, somebody? Let the fire fall. 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 My father, tonight, enter every house and begin to overturn the laws that rule that house. Let a new church be born tonight. Let a new church be born tonight. Let a new church be born tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can you begin to give God glory and praise? In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to be seated. Please. God brought this conference at the right time. Tomorrow we'll be doing more of ministrations. We'll just go minister to one another grace. Bring everybody you can bring. From the beginning, listening to all the speakers. But tomorrow we will seal covenants. Thank God I have two opportunities. We take our time and we spend a lot of time in the presence of the Lord in our own meetings. Everybody lives with something. And they all come to pass. There are things that are spoken of everywhere. Listen to me. Tomorrow, if you can declare half day fast, declare it. But deal with the issues of today. Follow the scriptures again. It is a mountain that will give up what it is holding. But your rocks must be removed first. So that the mountain can hear the word at your mouth. So the mountain can begin to give up. So all these prophecies can come to pass. If your rags is not removed like that of the high priest, it was his time and his turn to lead. And you will notice that at the end, the Lord made even the stones to carry his eyes. Eyes that will watch over him. So the Babalawo could not cast a spell on the stone. And they cannot do without the stones. Did you hear what I just said? But that stone carried the eyes of the Holy Spirit. On behalf of who? Joshua. Somebody and something will carry a witness for you. Amen. That will defend you everywhere you enter. Amen. We are getting into that tomorrow. Bring everybody come in. Divide. Let's fill this hall together. And raise a shout over the land. Because I'm going to just going to pray for the land, praying for us. Let's get out of here a glorious church. Amen. Thank you, sir, for the privilege. And I want to thank the executive and the planning committee, everyone that is involved in this planning. The Lord raise a remembrance for you. As a blessed sort, you will be 